got the shop in annuity. We got talented people growing their businesses. Anybody can do this business. You just have to want to get it done. That's what it comes down to. All sizes, make it. All ages, make it. What do they have in common? Energy, commitment, discipline, the will to execute to get it done. So you know what? What I want to talk about is creating momentum and the team mentality. I want to just step back a little bit so what I believe we can step forward a lot faster. Recruiting is going well, but the new recruits are not earning and are not building and are not duplicating correctly. And many of us are relying on the system to carry everything through. So I want to take just a short moment and give you a little insight from the time that you register a new business partner and then get them moving in the right direction, doing the right things to create momentum, establish our culture in different areas, and then ultimately create a team mentality. Because when people understand it's a team mentality, then they're more comfortable in sharing what they know, what they do, who they know, and how they work with one another. So it all starts with proper registration and website setup. Now I really love the partner now. But some of you think when they partner now, it's over, except for placement. You're ridiculous. That's not what it's about. You have to set up the time to explain what they just got into. And it starts with the registration. So don't be hurrying about that, because if you hurry, they won't know how to do what? Bring the next teammate in correctly. Also, you have to set up another appointment to talk about the web administration. Remember, the goal is to minimize administration so you can maximize the amount of time that you spend on the results producing activities. When we think about that, what's a good check for us as sponsors? Well, go to your new unfranchised training site, the way we set it up, and download the tracker. Real simple. We all have unfranchisetraining.com for all countries. Simply go to the area where the business fundamentals are and simply download the new ought or new unfranchise owner tracker. And then just take this one page and make sure you explain the things that are necessary so they won't lose a check. So they won't be upset with you when I got to take the call. My sponsor is so bad. I got the worst sponsor. And you know what? They're right. <laughs> They're right. When they don't know what a Form 1000 is or what a Q date is, and your answer is, well, they haven't been to a new unfranchised training yet, it's still on you. It's still on you. So, ladies and gentlemen, use this. Next, I want you to think about the shopping and newing assessment. What is happening after we get people started into the business? We want to go to do a home assessment. And the home assessment, in my opinion, is excellent, but the short version to start with. There's a single page in your Getting Started Guide. It introduces them to some of the things that they need to think about in their own purchases. Then book the appointment to do this shopping annuity assessment. It's critical that you do that. I loved what we saw up here, what Elizabeth did. But don't forget, house to house, coring to coring, take the time. Don't say, go fill this out. Don't do that. 
Because if you do, they're not going to duplicate it unless they're exceptional. And we want to create exceptional people. You all have the ability to be exceptional. But many of you just don't know how. So it is up to us to teach the system or to teach the steps. So this is a recommendation that works well in the organizations. This is where you download the shopping assessment at www.shoppingannuity.com. You all should know it. Next, you want to set the training and event dates. Now let's think about this. You cannot set the dates if you do not know the dates. <laughs> okay? So, do you think you might want to know the dates? And I recommend it for the next six months because these trainings will validate what you've been teaching and reinforce it so it becomes to be an action on a daily basis. I say book it out six months. Now, when we do these steps, start teaching the Market America culture. We have a culture in the way we do business. You have to understand that we build event to event. We build this business fast, not slow. Short sprints from one event to the next event which allows you to set up measurements. It allows you to help people become accountable. We need someone to keep us on course. And the accountability in the beginning comes from the sponsor. It has to be that way. Now, what are we going to book? The new on franchise training. If anybody is an executive coordinator and gone through their ECCT uh, training, you can officially train the new OT. You can officially train the basic five. But don't forget, book them to an internet sales and marketing training. This is essential that you get your people briefed on the tools that we give them for that whopping cost of $129.95. And if you're lucky enough to be a health professional, we'll just hit you for 30 more dollars and give you one more health professional website. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you get all these tools but don't know how to use them, what's the use? You might as well got it for free. So ladies and gentlemen, find or book to your area an official trainer that can come in and do the two-day training and get it done. Maximize your time. Leverage your time. I'm so wanting you to not do this in your business. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I see that way too much. You got to know what you got to do, what your tools are. Now, again, UBP schedules, unfranchised business presentation, HBP, home business presentation, book them. Those are the things you put on and host with your new unfranchised owner. You enter in the major events. August International Convention should be in. If you're visiting from another country, your national convention your leadership school, the world conferences, your regionals, your districts, your locals. And yes, you're going to go to about eight trainings a year. And if anybody looks funny at you, you have to question if the option is right for them in our business. Do we, we want residual income, correct? We want ongoing income. If you lay the groundwork early on, it saves you a whole lot of selling of tickets because it becomes automatic. We buy tickets. Who's the best speaker? The next speaker that's coming to your town. That's what we do. We build event to event, we sell tickets, we sell product, and we sell the business. Now, we put that all together. And I will say this to you. Once you started from the beginning, they're automatically buying three tickets every time you're out there, okay? Now, here's what I've learned that has helped me sell tickets and get them mentally right. When you start talking to people about the business 
as in all businesses, we have to go through training. Well, when you talk about that, you ask the question, are you willing to travel to become good at what you do? Great. Book August 6th, 7th, and 8th. We're going to Greensboro, North Carolina. Let's look in your calendar right now. Ladies and gentlemen, people, if you buy tickets, sell them in the next 30 days. People can change their schedules to be somewhere in August. And if they say it's a vacation day, you're going to say, correct, it is. And use it for the right reasons so you can take longer vacations. Do not accept excuses for people not to do what they're needing to do. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Now, the other thing that I want you to know is we've got to think about selling out that first order. Selling out the products so they can make the second order. And that means 10 repeat customers on Market America branded products. Does everybody hear that? Why do I say that? Ladies and gentlemen, you are business people, correct? Yes, I heard here. Are you business people up there? And over there? Well, you got to know where your highest margins are. Where do you make the money? And it's the Market America branded products. They're backed by science, high quality. And what do we do? We help your new teammates select the product or products and the university major that it works with. Why did I say that? You hear JR talk about it. Because if you're in motives and you bring someone in Nutrimetrics to work with health professionals, you can't train a person working with health professionals on how to put on makeup. You've got to put them in the right school. Does that make sense? Now you know what school and curriculum you have to put them in. That's all we want to do. That's why we have the university major overviews. It's just, it's not a training. A university major overview is not a training. It's simply an orientation to what a Market America University can provide you. Multiple majors. It's okay to have double majors. Now, like anything else, you heard it this morning. You've heard JR say, match people to products, products to people. Well, create a list of 30 to 40 names. Now, why did I just say 30 to 40? Because normally, after you get through your warm market, it takes three to four names to find one person who's going to buy a product that you have. Now, if you have 30 to 40 names on a list, you have people to invite. You have people to work with your new ways to sell product. What I say, you have an opportunity to train your new business person on how to retail effectively, how to follow up. This is what I don't understand. You work so hard to recruit somebody, you bring somebody in, and then you forget the most important part. You got to teach them what to do, not just train them. You've got to show them and then watch them do it. Does everybody, do you hear me? Not just train them, you got to show them, and then you got to watch them do it so that they gain the confidence that they can do it without you. Because we are not trying to create dependency here. We want to be independent, okay? We want to be independent. But like anything, before you send your children off, you spend a lot of time with them, bringing them up. Same thing. We're not asking all oh, their whole life, but we're asking them to get them going. Now, I am so big on the new internet tools. You need to be able to know about the online parties, the motive parties, the TLS now, how to invite friends, your e-gifts, your shop boxes. You're going to learn tomorrow. Lauren and Steve, they're going to do a great internet marketing and sales training. You want to pay attention. Don't be intimidated. Be sure you try it. It's good for you. Now, last but not least, we got to show the plan, show the business. And ladies and gentlemen, all this is going on at the same time. Everything I spoke to, it's all going on at the same time. You will be a circus act, okay? You will be a circus act when you build an unfranchised business. So we start with, again, a list 
of 60 to 100 people. Then two names a day that you add to your list. Why? This is your training ground. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to make very, very sure that you are building your new unfranchised business business with their names. If they don't provide names, sit down with them and help them make a list. If your new unfranchised owner says, I don't want to do a list because then you'll see my names, smack them. And then say, you didn't get that everybody gets paid 100% of 100%. And call up Big Al and he'll go through the spiel with them, right? Now, the whole point that I'm trying to say right here is, yes, you have to get the names. You have to. And we're setting up to what? Sell events and we're selling tickets. Now, again, when it all comes down here, we want to schedule two home business presentations in the first 30 to 90 days. Why? We have to get that new one franchise owner traction. Now, all the things that I talked about, proper registration, you know, proper training and what they got to do, booking their dates, getting their home assessment, and then going into the shopping annuity assessment, getting in their 10 repeat customers with MA branded products, and then getting them to show the plan. Everything is working from their list. Does everybody understand that? Now here's my biggest nugget to take away. You got it, Marty, because you're my man. All right, now, this is a business where each UFO is a business asset, okay? They're an asset. Do not recruit somebody who will not be an asset to your business. I swear some of you recruit people I just scratch my head about. I mean, you got to treat it as such. You have to spend time and give your UFOs the very best opportunity for success. And the rest will be dependent on their commitment to succeed. Did everybody hear that? I never feel bad if somebody drops out. You know why? Because I do everything I can to help them be successful. We can't help you if you don't want to be successful. Does everybody understand that? Okay? I mean, do your part. But here's the kicker. Why the lists? However, you have worked through their lists, and now their names are your names supporting the team outcome, the unfranchised business success. Does everybody understand that? All right. That was the groundwork for the next presenter. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a man I've been working with really closely for the last four and a half years. I love him like a brother. He's done a great job. He's a great leader. He's a great salesperson, a good marketer. He's proven that he can do the business. I'm very proud to be associated with Vice President of Sales, Jim Winkler. Please help me welcome him to the stage. Um, I I'm going to share with you a little bit about building in the homes. How, how many people build in the homes here right now? I see a lot of million dollar earners raising their hands. Um, I want to go through and just explain a couple things why it is so important. I came here 1998. I actually was the Knight Center in Miami, which held 7,000 people. You know where I was sitting? I was sitting right up there. Actually, I was right over here. Top row is where I was sitting, looking down on the stage, last seat up on the top listening to a, a, a lady, and she was just running around and screaming and talking about building in the homes. Her name was Elizabeth Weber. Right? We learned a lot from Elizabeth. And she was saying, look, I built my whole business in the homes. She was saying, I, I do four of these presentations a week at least. And I said, okay. She makes a million dollars a year. I don't. I'm going to build in the homes the way she does. I was an executive coordinator at that time. I came in 1998. I'd started in uh, end of August 1997. In the next six months, I went to supervising coordinator because I figured if she did four, I'll do five. So I wanted to get there quick, and I built quick, and I was in the homes. I had 20 people in my organization. When I first got there, I booked 19 home presentations with those 20 people, and that really led to the entire organization now that's continued to build. I have a belief, and I know Jar and I have talked about this, and we, we don't even know how to describe it, but there is something magical that occurs when you're in a small group environment with a few people. 
Uh, it's where the relationships are built. It's where the, the, the friendships are built long term. And it's where the magic happens. This is a business that has been built in the homes for years. And with all the great technology we have, with all the advancements we have, it has not changed. And I want to make sure everyone is listening. You can disagree with me and you will be wrong. Okay? You have to build in the homes if you want to move fast. Guests attend in the homes of people they know. Isn't that true? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you? Okay, good. They're comfortable. They know the people with it. It maximizes our time. Who are these met for? They're typically met for the new person, aren't they? Let's get the new person activated. Let's get them new customers. You bring somebody new in the business, get in their home as fast as you can. And I'll have people say, but Jim, my, my people don't want to do home meetings. You know, it's not that your people don't want to. It's the way you are approaching them as you are getting them started in the business. It shouldn't be an option. It should be this is how we do the business. It puts good pressure on them. And by that, what I mean is if they know you're coming to the home, they're going to have to do work to get some things done. I have a young man in my organization named John Martin. I know, John, you're here uh, this weekend. And, and I told John I wanted to book a home meeting in his home. He said, Jim, I have a studio apartment. You'll be, you'll be, people will be sitting on my bed to hear the presentation. I said, you better make it. So we went in, we did the presentation. Uh, he got six people there after telling me his warm list was completely ta uh, no good anymore. I said, call him back, tell him to get him there. Because of the good pressure on him, he got six or seven people there, I think it was, two registered in the business, and he's got two business partners here with him because of that uh, meeting we did there. Lisa went in about a, a two weeks ago, did a home meeting for him, or three weeks ago did one for him, two more uh, new business partners coming in the business. Because when you're in the homes, you're in that little environment, it just flat out works. It leverages your time, you're talking to more than one person. And, and again, I said it's where we create the friendships and bonds. Now I could sit here and I could talk about this forever, but the truth of it is it's also better to hear from somebody else, isn't it? If I could, could I have Kay and Shelly, would you guys come on out with me? Kay, when did you start the business? I started the business about seven months ago. About seven months ago. And uh, after starting the business, did you start doing home presentations uh, with your group right away? Not you doing them, but having them for yourself and other people? I did not. I didn't start till my fourth month. To your fourth month. Okay. And uh, what got you to start doing them? I see all the people in the front. This is what you guys talk about. And I tried to reinvent the wheels in the beginning. But I had to try what you guys did, and that's what works, and now I'm sticking with it. Okay, so, so that, you, you've been in the business since July, you said. Four months of not doing any home presentations, so that would only give us a, a few months of doing them. Um, how many are you doing your own now? Yes. And why'd you start doing your own? Um, I always did my own because you have to make the mistakes to learn, and that's the way I think it should work. It, you, it was like Bishop Jordan said, right? This is not a business of watching. It's a business of getting out there and doing. How many a week are you doing now, Kay? Three to four. Three to four home business presentations a week. And I also know you go to one UBP a week, right? Yes. So three to four home presentations, one UBP a week. Um, how, how many people do you have in your organization now since you started doing that? Over 60. Over 60 people in your organization. How many do you have here? I have 25 here. You have 25 people here since you started this. And you know, one of the reasons we were talking about when you were coming up is at the end of your meetings, you do something really good. You move a lot of tickets to local events. Uh, you've sold tickets here. How do you do that? I'd rather have everyone to have the belief and education rather than starting the business. Starting the business means I have to invest time. I know they can do it, but I need them to know they can do it too. So you, you basically say to them, look, if you're considering it, buy a ticket. That's the next best thing you can do. Yep. Okay. How many of us would grow faster if we were getting people to events all the time? And what Kay does, she lives in an area 
where she has another local an hour and a half away and another local an hour and a half away, and she's actually started utilizing all three because they're doing so many home events, she just takes them to the next one coming up, and she'll get a van or whatever and take the whole team with her. It's brilliant. Congratulations, Kay. You're doing a great job with everything. Thank you. This will be our last time seeing you at Executive Coordinator. I know that. Good job. All right, this is Shelly Bow. She's a Supervising Coordinator. Shelly has been, uh, Shelly and I go back a long time. Shelly's been in the business, came in shortly after I did. Right. Uh, known each other a long time. And, and Shelly, when you started, were you doing a lot of home presentations? Back 1998, right? Yeah, when we started our business, that is what we did. And I think Jim and I, that's just, we planned it that way. I mean, when you personally enrolled somebody into the business, it was all about those home events. And it didn't matter what it was, as long as we were building and doing things in the home. Yeah. And you, and you grew pretty fast to supervising. How, how long did it take you to hit supervising? I think it was four, four and a half years we hit supervising. Four, four and a half yep. years in. Then you had great money coming in, more than you'd ever made. Did you, did you step back from doing the home presentations a little bit? No, that's why we're still at this financial level. <laughs> <laughs> we did. You know, we got a little bit comfortable. And I think it was more than that, though. I think that it started to be that we didn't realize the importance of building by one, two, three people in a home. And I think we got a little bit, you know, to the point where we're thinking, is it really worth it? Why not just plug into a UBP? Why not just see if we can get them to a large event? And we started to lose uh, some of the momentum and the energy, the enthusiasm and the camaraderie that we had as a group. And I think after years of seeing sort of that stagnation with our organization, we just had to realize there was something we used to do that we were no longer doing and it was preventing us from growing. And uh, that was probably, what, Jim, maybe a couple years back? A couple years back. But Shelly made a huge point. I want to make sure everybody heard it. She said they stopped doing it because sometimes there were only one or two or three guests there. And sometimes you hear people on stage and they're like, when I go do a UB, uh, an HBP, a home presentation, there's 10 guests there, 20 guests there. Here's the truth of it. If there's one, two, three, or four, is that a great presentation? Absolutely. It's a great presentation. That's how it should be. You have a really good point, Shelly. Um, so I know you started doing them again, and not just home presentations, both of you do a lot of product presentations as well. It's just you're in the home somehow. What, what's happened in the last year to your business? How many are you doing now a week, would you say? Right. I mean, we don't go a week without a home event, and Jim's right. I don't care what it is, guys. It doesn't need to be fancy, whether it be TLS, Wellness, Motive, Shop.com, Shopping Annuity, HBP, whatever it is, just keep booking them and booking them and booking them. Always schedule it. Get your calendar over full. Um, but in the last year, we've had at least 150 new unfranchise owners added to our organization. Just in the last three weeks, we had six new unfranchise levels that were hit in our organization. Uh, we had eight business presentations, well, business and product presentations combined just a week and a half ago within our organization. And that's a point I want to make today, guys, is I think there was another um, piece to this that I was missing, and that was I always thought it had to be me. And I don't think I was empowering people to get out there and do it on their own to become their own leader. Because they had the skills, it was just, I think I was afraid to step back. And let it go. And let that. it go. And uh, that's what's changed a lot in the last year. I have great leaders, we're empowering them, and we're pushing them out there, and now we're having double, triple events on one evening throughout the organization. Well, that's great, Shelley. Congratulations. And Kay, one more question for Kay. Kay, I know you also have had a lot of organizational uh, unfranchised levels in your business. Do you know how many by any chance? I'm throwing you on the spot here, but I know a lot in the last little bit. I have one EC and two is about to hit next week, and we probably have um, five, six coordinators, and we're getting people activated right away, getting people paid right away. And that's the key. A new, a new business partner who has an EC already and people getting paid, and Shelly, you said it as well. I think one of the keys isn't just them doing it, it's getting other people doing it, and it's getting their people paid faster, which is really the key to our business, True. isn't it? So, you know, when we talk about these home business presentations, usually you have a sponsor, senior partner, do it, right? You can use, if it's a, if it's a business presentation, you can use the unfranchised uh, uh, PowerPoint, the UBP PowerPoint, which is unfranchisetraining.com, and it is already updated for you. You could use a video if you needed to, but I do recommend learning the business plan Boy, if you, can't, if you can't do it on the PowerPoint, I mean, we, Tony, we did it on whiteboards, didn't we? We hold note cards. You can do it. Um, a lot of times you'll use a laptop and connecting cable. I like to have the ability to go online. 
credibility items there. Right now, what's another thing you're going to have is an assessment there with you. Less chairs than you think you will need. For those of you who've never done one of these, less chairs than you think you need. And please don't ever mention the people who don't show up. Can't tell you how many home meetings I've been to where somebody starts complaining to the guests that are there about the ones who didn't show up. That's like saying, ah, you're here, but I wish they were. <laughs> have some products to sell and show. Uh, I love our daily essentials kits now where you have the ability, you can wrap the, rip open the packages, pour it, have them take a drink, uh, and try the products right away. Have tickets to the next event. You heard Kay talking. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anyone sell tickets to a next event like she does. Um, she does every event, and then she posts it on Facebook, and you'll see a home event with three guests holding tickets to the next local seminar. Have fun. It's a key. How would you treat people if they came over to your house? You want to have fun with what you do? Because a lot of people get started in the business not because they understand it, because, boy, it looks like these guys are having a great time doing it. Go over the names list and over-invite. And one thing I'm going to tell you, if you're, if you're working with a new person, if I'm working with Tony and he's my new guy, I'm going to book a call workshop where Tony and I are going to make calls together. If I want to guarantee a good home presentation, we're going to do some calls together. A lot of times the mistake we make is we bring somebody into the business, then we tell them to call people to come over to their house, and they have no idea what to say or what to do. They get beat up. They don't call enough people. The event doesn't go well, and then they're thinking maybe they shouldn't do it. But really, we're the ones who made the mistake. If we just sat down and did it with them, they'd be doing uh, wonderful with it. For my younger generation in the room, I love you, but do not text people to the meetings. Because when you text them to the meetings, they don't show up. Do what I do with my children. Text them and say, I'm going to be calling you. Pick it up. Then invite them to the meeting, because that way you know you will get them there. Text, email, other things, social media, those are all tremendous, but they are to help not to make you do the calls, not to, they don't do it for you. When you start, introduce yourself, and then introduce the other unfranchised owners in the room. I'd say, Rick, and pre-doing this, I'm going to talk to Rick and Andy, and I'm going to say, guys, 30 seconds, tell why you're in the business. I'm going to ask the guests, why are you there? What, what made you decide to come this evening? Teach your partners to keep it short. Uh, ask the guests what they do for a living, like I just said. Then I like to go online right away and show our shop.com website. Why do I like to show our website right away? Is that pretty good credibility? Can I go into, the, can I go into when I'm in a home environment, talking about converting spending into earning, about stores you already buy from, about different things right off the bat? From there, introduction to company and products, go through the business plan, close guests to getting started, learning more or buying tickets, always sell tickets, always sell products, and always get that shopping annuity ready for people to take a look at. Now, I did this very quick for you, but here's the bottom line. If you can duplicate this in your group, what would happen? How fast would you go? How would you like to be standing here like Shelly was, a veteran like many of you in the room, who were in the same position she was in. You built it, and you sort of backed off a little bit, and she jumped back. How do you mean you'd like to have 150 new people with you at World Conference next year? I think that's what we're taking a look at. Or how many of you would like to start a new person like Kay and have them have 60 people in their group and 25 of them at International Convention? See, it's not bringing people in the business. It's teaching people how to do the business and how to get paid.